So this is a bit, um, I guess, not as well motivated. I started out with this because we've been talking about meson. But the easier thing to, by the way, this is what's called meson octet. But what's uh, easier to motivate without knowing a lot of particle physics is actually a pattern of the baryons. So, um, so, so far you guys have learned about two baryons, right? Um, we are going to talk about six more of these. Um, so these are actually very particular type of baryon. So these are the baryons with spin one half. With the baryons, as in particles in the range of the mass of the neutrons and protons and higher, you can actually have spin one, uh, sorry, spin three half baryon. So within the limit of spin one half, we are going to have six more baryons. And particle physicists have discovered nine more spin three half um, baryons, uh, spin three half baryons. So let me just write it down here. Spin three half baryons, um, nine discovered. So this is what we call particle Jew. It's, uh, so we start out with uh, trying to describe elementary subatomic particles. And these start to multiply like element. So in indicating you know, there might be some kind of underlying structure that these baryons and mesons that we are looking at, maybe they are not elementary. Maybe they are made up of something more. And it's that underlying structure that they were trying to figure out. And Gelman's or Gelman's, um, his, um, let me write down the name somewhere. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm sure he pronounced it somewhere. Um, by, I want to say Gelman, but I'm not sure if it's, that's right. Um, so Gelman's model is what stood the test of time. And so this is, so there is an actually underlying structure here. That's why it's arranged this way. And with the baryons, with the spin, both the spin one half and spin three half baryons, you can kind of arrange them more easily. So let me actually tell you um, the particles that were discovered. And this is where I uh, stopped actually having the things memorized. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the beginning of this note where I list all the particles, well, not all, many of the particles that have been discovered. So, um, yeah, all right. So um, you recognize some of these particles, right? You recognize the proton, neutron. You recognize the pions and the K meson and the eta that I just mentioned without introducing it. <laughs> um, so those are good. And these are the six additional baryons that exist, uh, that people have found in looking at cosmic ray interactions. And the main way they would categorize it is by kind of looking at their decay products. By looking at their decay products, they can assign charges, um, like it has charge zero. If you infer somehow that it decays into two photons or something like that, or two pi neutral pions. And they, um, uh, also, these get assigned some kind of strangeness. But when you look at baryons, you can actually start to see a pattern that's just built in there without you having to struggle through it. Look at how pro oh, sorry, wrong color. Look at how proton and neutron are similar in mass. Do you see any other particles that are similar in the way neutron and, neutron and proton are? Right? lambda, or what got named as lambda, and then the three sigma boson, uh, boson baryons, they all have the same or similar mass. And the C, this is the capital C. Uh, C. Uh, this is a capital, capital C, uh, so um, neutral C and the negatively charged C. And for some reason, they're, they've never found the positively charged C. See. So, but these masses, like uh, with the atomic weights, become a hint for maybe there is something periodic here. 
maybe there's some pattern here that you can associate with the energies of these particles. So let's just uh, kind of arrange them. Um, I guess the, um, so I'm going to call this baryon, well, people call this baryon octet. <laughs> it's not my name. Um, and kind of the natural way to do it is, you know, let's go from light to heavy. And so you could have put, I don't know how it goes. I think I want to be at the most negative charge on the leftmost and the most positive charge on the rightmost. So let's go then neutron and proton. All right, then I do my next row. Most negative particle is C, sorry, sigma. Um, so minus sigma. Uh, I have neutral sigma and I have positive sigma. And since I have two charged two particles that are definitely different, they have slightly different mass, but all, um, you know, same charge. So I'll just put lambda in the same kind of box as where I'm putting neutral sigma. And here the most negative is actually negative. So let's put um, C minus here and C plus C neutral here. So they, these are organized by weight. And, um, sorry. And if uh, a lot of this isn't making sense in the sense that like you don't know why they were doing it, that's perfectly fine. Um, we, I teach this version only because that's what stood the test of time. I'm sure theorists of the time tried many other crazy shapes <laughs> that just didn't work out or cry, tried many other crazy ideas that we don't talk about them anymore because they turned out to be wrong. Um, so this is just what turned out to be right. And once you kind of arrange them this way, then you begin to see some pattern that you can notice again. Uh, there's a pattern of charge, which is kind of built into how I built them. This is the line for negative charge, neutral charge, and positive charge. All right. Um, and so these baryons can be assigned strangeness. And it turns out after they were done assigning strangeness, um, this is what they found by, you know, so you assign strangeness by looking at decays. Any kind of quick decay, you can assume that this kind of decay conserves the strangeness. Um, so, so for example, the sigma uh, baryons, like sigma minus, I think it's heavy enough to decay into pi, uh, K meson. So they probably saw decay of this into K meson. Let's just double check. To be sure, um, I think we have time to double check this. So, wait. Oh, I keep getting rid of this um, PDG. I don't know if I can look up uh, sigma barrier. All right, done. Um, particle listings. Okay, um, sigma baryons. So let's just say sigma minus what it decays into. It decays into, um, so mean life, it's not very long lived. Uh, well, 10 to minus 10 is actually pretty long. Anyways, let's see what it decays into. Magnetic moment, decay mode, okay, okay. Um, oh, wait, it all decays into um, lambda pi minus, okay, um, so this is how you would uh, argue. So I guess it's not actually heavy enough to decay into K meson. Um, but so oh, it's not heavy enough to decay into K meson and another baryon. So it de does decay into pi meson, but as I was uh, commenting on as we were scrolling through, it's a uh, lifetime is, not that's magnetic moment. Its lifetime is pretty long, 10 to minus 10 seconds. So you assume that decay must have required change of a strangeness. So with that, you can infer that, oh, then I guess let's say this has strangeness of one. 
this has strangeness of zero. And when you look at sigma, um, I don't think sigma is still heavy enough to decay into K meson. So, the, oh, so not sigma, C. I can't really say the words right. Let's look at C baryon and see how long it lives. Maybe it's longer lived than sigma even. No, I haven't looked. I probably should have looked. <laughs> so you can see that they assigned, oh, sorry, I messed up. Strangeness of minus one. <laughs> they assigned the strangeness of minus two. And that's probably based on something like lifetime. Uh, let me first look at the decay mode so that uh, I have better idea of what it's decaying into <laughs> before I start talking. Um, okay, so it decays mostly into lambda, which from their study earlier uh, has a strangeness of minus one. So if this also has a strangeness of minus one, then it should uh, decay reasonably quickly because you're not trying to violate strangeness conservation. But when you look at the actual lifetime, uh, mean life here, it still has lifetime of about 10 to minus 10 seconds. So it probably also involves violation of strangeness. So this now has an additional strangeness of minus two. So this organization is a little bit more, I guess, easy to motivate because these rules come from the masses and looking at the strangeness to assign comes from looking at the lifetime of these heavier variants. 